Chairman, yes, sir. First of all, I, it's your prerogative as how you proceed. I would like to <coughs> state that since you have adjourned this meeting, you can conduct your work session. Please do not take any binding action during that work session. If you wished to, you would need to reconvene as the board can. That's, that's, that's I didn't want to do it. Right. Well, I didn't want to take any action until we get <laughs> well, we got um, another gather some information. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Uh, this is the way uh, progress goes. Uh, the minute you have a person up here that has all the answers, you're going to look at his hands, okay? And if he doesn't have nail holes in his hands, because see, only he knows all rules and regulations. So, do you want to go back into the uh, session? I want to move we go back into session. Uh, Reconvene in session two. I, I really don't want to make a uh, decision today. I'd rather have gather a information. Okay, die for lack of a uh, second. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the work session. Okay, um, in January of 2017. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners adopted a resolution, I think it was Resolution 1 for 2017, actually. Um, the access control or access management policy, um, setting some uh, regulations and restrictions on how often and how frequently you can have uh, driveway access along certain roads. Um, since then, there have been many discussions on that item. We have uh, tried to work through and come up with some alternatives for the board to consider. Um, and there's some other items that, as we're discussing this, that came up as far as um, the development guidelines and some of the, the one policy that we had that was kind of an unwritten policy that we'd like for the board to formalize too, which is the development policy um, on how we handle the roads when you have a new subdivision that comes in. <clears throat> All that information has been provided to you, and um, we just look forward to discussing this in an open format, getting some better ideas, and bringing back to you the future resolutions that would address this. And you have some uh, draft resolutions that were provided um, with some language that the staff is recommending, and again, we're looking forward to any input that the commission has. Who wants to uh, want to start it, or do we ask for people who are? Yeah, I'd rather David start, or Sarah, whichever one. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, if you recall, um, we uh, the the board adopted a, a resolution uh, for access management. I think it was like eight months ago, and uh, it went to the planning commission. And the planning commissioners had some concerns about the the length of the spacing between driveways. Um, so it was we, we went back to the drawing board and planning and zoning work with public works, and we have two sets of documents before you. One is the access management policy. Um, basically, we went back to uh, spacing between roadways. Uh, we defined the classification of roadways. So we have four different classifications. One is major arterial, minor arterial, and then collector, minor, major collector, and minor collector. Uh, so if you look at table on page one, there's a table that provides the, the spacing for different classifications. For major arterial, that's greater than 1,000 vehicles per day. It's 660 feet between um, driveways. And then if you look at the minor, it's less than 1,000 vehicles per day. The spacing is uh, 330, 330 feet between driveways. And if you look at the collector, uh, for major collector, it's uh, 330 feet between driveways. And for minor collector, it's 200 feet between driveways. 
I take it that local road was at 125. Yes, uh, local roads are all the same, so it's just uh, 125 feet between between driveways. So what, what we plan to do is adopt this within the zoning and subdivision regulations, uh, this part of the document, so that way we can, um, if there are any exceptions, we can take it to the Board of Zoning Appeals and they have the authority to, to grant exceptions with the criteria that was set by the state statutes. Notice on your page two, under five, development occurring within 1,320 feet of an incorporated city limits. Here we go, back in the city. So. Yes. Um, Cities need to annex, and if they don't need to annex and do like the city did one time many years ago, one of the cities, and said, oh my God, we gotta supply this, and we gotta supply that, and we gotta do this, and we gotta do that. No, within time limits, there are certain things you have to do. Uh, well, we don't want to supply fire protection. Well, they back up fire protection. They back up this. They, you know, uh, consolidation. Well, we don't want consolidation. Consolidation is good. We want codes. No, we don't want codes. You know. Uh, so again, I, I point that out because it's talking here about 1,320 feet, and there's a lot of people don't maybe don't care about that, but the cities need to be doing what they need to do to get us out of their business, because they're in our business. So I just want to point that out. Again, we have, uh, and it's, it's also to show why we don't need any more business time, because I spend enough time as it is, uh, days and days and hours. Uh, I didn't let it interrupt KU, but you know, I took two hours off there. So I just wanted to point that out. So yeah. Go ahead. We added that in to, to protect that area. Um, so within quarter mile of the, the city limits, if we receive any applications for uh, any plats or track splits, we send that information to the cities and they have to give us a letter of um, um, acceptance or a letter of um, what we call it? Certificate, certificate of authorization, certificate from, the, of authorization. from the cities. So that way, just to make sure that they agree with what, what they're proposing. <coughs> And then we also added a grandfathering clause to the, to the document. So if there are any existing parcels um, within the county, they are allowed access. So we're not, uh, we're not, we're not doing anything that's going to uh, create a problem for the existing parcel owners. I thought it was interesting, though. On your bottom page three, transfer of ownership. An owner of property affected by access management policy which has less than the required road frontage, may always sell their property. Now the seller he can, or the owner can always sell his property. The new owner may build a house on a vacant piece of property and be granted an excess point provided the requirements within the county regulations applicable at the time of application are met. So the buyer doesn't have the same rights as the seller. Well, it's up to the buyer to check everything before oh, yeah. they buy the... Yeah, I know that. <coughs> it's called buyer beware, right? Yes. Uh, but it, to me, uh, there's no logic. If you're going to... I'm going to give you the right to sell your property, and you've got one inch of... And I can't do anything in that one inch. The ladies up there in North Park bought an 80 acres, and they have no access except to... Because it's a point. So they have no access, they have no road. Now, if they had asked me, I would have said, ma'am, you have no access. And they wouldn't have bought that property. But now they're in limbo because the owner can sell, according to these new rules, can sell anything because he's grandfathered in, but the buyer doesn't have the same. So just a, just a point, good point, bad point, all in the eyes of the beholder. Um, and then also section five, it says that um, they can apply for special use permits and it will be granted. They have to go to planning commission and the board of county commission and special use permits will be, uh, will be granted according to the regulations. So that hasn't changed at all. But it has to be to his okay. 
question because he's going to pick the point where this access will be. Correct. Yeah, that yeah. that it'll be For a similar purposes. application, just like a special <coughs> use permit, um, and uh, public works will review that and approve the access points. Yes. Okay. And then section six is the the variances. Uh, basically, if uh, if the applicant doesn't meet the, the requirements, then they have the option to go before the Board of Zoning Appeals and um, apply for a variance. So they have that option also available. They don't have the option of the County Commission? Um, no, sir. Since it's within the Zoning and Subdivision Regulations, it's, it's, uh, it goes to the Board of Zoning Appeals for, for variances. They make the decision, and then those people can, are not allowed to come to us and say. Then they have to go to the District Court. District Court, yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. okay. But our Board of Zoning Appeals is the same board that would deny it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Do we ever uh, the point that Mr. Smith brings up? That board does two things. Approves <coughs> and then to the Board of Zoning Appeals. But according is to the state's not a conflict. Commissioner, if your excuse me, your planning commission may serve as your board of zoning appeals. It does seem incongruous to have the same individuals, or at least a part of a subset of the group of individuals who may have denied the uh, application as planning commission later hear that as a board of zoning appeals. As a practical matter, you have tried to recruit membership for the board of zoning appeals. That did in fact occur in the past found out or by experience that uh, individuals did not wish to serve on the Board of Zoning Appeals or would not meet in a regular basis. So we resumed using the Planning Commission as the Board of Zoning Appeals. We also serve as the, what is that, the Health? Health Department. Yeah. Is that a conflict? I don't know. It isn't me. But I'm not a lawyer and a judge. They have a lot of conflicts. So, uh, is it possible the Board of County Commissioners could be the Board of Zoning Appeals? No. It cannot be? No. I don't okay. think so, Commissioner. Hmm. Okay. You said that awful fast. I've <laughs> thought about it a long time. Okay. Give me a smile. It has been looked into, Commissioners. Uh, this the state statutes. The state statutes do apply. As a practical matter, again, planning and zoning, and I've worked with it, prior commissions have worked with it quite some time, I'm talking about years, to try to resolve the issue of how to have a viable Board of Zoning Appeals. And the best solution we arrived at was to have the Planning Commission service the Board of Zoning Appeals. I think we, we talked about that in 92, 96, so same problem. Uh, it's, it's funny that, well, we could have it at the same meeting, couldn't it? They could adjourn and have their meeting. Yes, that's how it's, yeah. it's done. Yes. So, okay. But you have to pay a fee to file for yes. a, a, to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Yes, it's a separate fee. It's $300. $300? Yeah. Mm -hmm. $300. $300. $300. Well, that's some significance. Okay. We're, go ahead, Jeff. Um, that's the uh, the end of the actual access management policy, and then the second part is uh, we have development impact fees, and, and Public Works has uh, done a, a very good work on that. So I'll let them explain that. I, I think we need to address each one and move forward. Yeah, okay, we'll go back to the So if we can, if we can Bob. talk about the access management policy since that's the one that we started on. Yep. Get some feedback now and um, <coughs> make any adjustments that need to be made. Do any of the commissioners have anything before we get to the public? Um, no, it's pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Is there anything in here to address site distance or anything? Uh, we do. So, yeah. this partner, so their access management policy partners with the Public Works resolution, so maybe we can explain both of those together since they go together. They maybe that would assist. So to go along with the access management policy, I, in your packet you have a draft resolution uh, for your comments on, but number one on the draft resolution addresses that uh, site distance. 
and also on that resolution we we removed the limitation of number of driveways per parcel if you have and the reason for that is if, if you have the required spacing if you can meet the required spacing then then we feel you should be able to have more driveways if you meet the spacing requirements so that that part was removed from the resolution because the parcel so you're saying if you got 10 acres or if you got a hundred acres if you have enough road frontage right. to meet the spacing requirements we're not we're not saying you can only have one, one okay and this limits uh, I guess this this removes the because differentiation between um, an agricultural driveway and a standard driveway they're all just access points they're all driveways so this this hopefully assists so do um, we have our the authority to access, uh, uh, put agricultural driveways in this resolution? A driveway is a driveway now. So it doesn't matter if it's an agricultural driveway or if it's a driveway to a specific domain. Um, and it's an access point. So this would assist some of those previous um, driveway applicants who've come in in the past year and a half who've had the acreage and who've had the driveway spacing but due to our current limitations they were denied an additional access point so and the current driveways that are already in are grandfathered in they would just be looked at as access points so if, if there's one driveway but they can have the minimum spacing for four more and they've they have say you know 14 15 acres or something that allows that because they have the roadway frontage they'd be allowed to have those driveways they'd submit a permit each driveway access point would would have its own permit criteria and we'd review it in, in such the same way okay. do we ever get involved with uh, shared driveway problems i think they involve so. us like Oh, so you got to do something. So, how does this affect the sh shared driveway? There's nothing in here regarding shared driveways. We tr we try to avoid shared driveways because they lead to problems with neighbors. But there are a lot of them out there. Yes, there are. <coughs> and with our current spacing criteria, um, as of the 2017-1, we were seeing a lot of required shared driveway accesses with. Uh, the lot splits that were being requested in some of the plots so this also addresses um, and removes hopefully all of those okay. um, well like I said addresses the side distance uh, variances variances would go with how the, the BZA or we used to grant variances. This board did. So. And so if there's an existing agricultural entrance and they come in and get a building permit, it's just considered that driveway's existing? It, correct. Agricultural entrance and a driveway are now all the same. They're all an access mm -hmm. to a roadway. But if it's been there, for 50 years and it, now all of a sudden you apply for a building permit and is it going to be grandfathered in if it doesn't meet the spacing requirements we have to make, we have to make sure it has adequate sight distance so i can't i can't say yes they will be mm -hmm. it, it still has to be looked at to make sure it's in a an adequate spot because a a field entrance is going to generate much less traffic than a, a right. home entrance so right. where it was fine as a field entrance it may no longer be fine as a as a residential entrance Okay. And we'd, we'd look at it also with the lineal feet of roadway frontage. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's now there's multiple options and multiple ways to review an access point compared to the previous previous options. Okay, and then what if the, the traffic count changes on the road and gets uh, past your threshold of pain and then the county redoes the road, how are we going to address the driveways then? We're not going to, we don't go out and take driveways away from people. The, the, the traffic count would only apply to when new, new splits, new subdivisions come in. That's okay. when we would look at the traffic count to see which, which category that piece of ground would fall into. 
for, for any future driveways. Okay. We're not going to go back and redo all the driveways along a road because the traffic is now 1,500. Well, just say these road projects we got coming up, and there's a lot of driveways that don't meet this right now. Or we're going to still allow the act. We're not going to make them put in a shared driveway or an access road no, or anything they're, they're like existing. that. they're existing. For, for example, on 147th Street, right. there was several uh, homes that had uh, you, uh, horseshoe driveways. Mm -hmm. We didn't, and those don't meet policy, but we, we didn't take those away from people. Okay. So they, they were put back. Okay. You done? I am. Okay. Anybody from the public want to come up uh, and have a comment? My concern is this uh, Glenberry from District 1, if that means anything. Um, does what you're changing, who's going to be responsible for the culverts under these driveways we're going to allow them to put in? Right now, the county puts them in, right? Mm -mm. No? We stopped doing I that. Okay. We stopped installing new driveways. The, the we'll first place old ones. The first culvert is at the cost of the property owner. State statute requires that the county maintain existing right. culvert. So any culvert after the first is the responsibility of the county. After the first of? Uh, after the first culvert. Install. Okay. So once it rots out, any damage, then it's. But if I want to, if I own, like, if I own 10 acres of frontage and I, I want to put in multiple driveways along that, field accesses, you call it what you want. If I put them in those field access and then I start split properties to sell lots off of that, who's who's responsible for those? Not Because they're, they're not field access anymore. Now they're going to be home entrances. <clears throat> Is there a, does that affect? It doesn't change. Nothing changes. You're still responsible for the first culvert and then the count, if it has to be replaced, then it's the count. So the county has no say over whether the drainage in their county right away, because you guys have right away on that piece of property from the center of the road. If I put a culvert in, <coughs> come back and tell me I didn't put it in to meet your specs. No, it's in, it's inspected. We tell you the size of the culvert, and it's inspected when it's constructed. Okay. There's a permit process, so the permit would still be the same. Come in, request request the access point. That's why I just want to make sure that the county wasn't going to start bearing the, the front of people to score field access that turned into down the road home entrances. No. Okay. They still have to be permitted. Okay. And I noticed on the uh, sign in, it says James, and it comes up and it's Glenn. So, would you ask him his preference? Anybody else want to comment? Mr. Brewer. I think it's Brewer, isn't it? Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Brewer of the 17607 198th Street. Um, I wear a couple hats. Uh, we've developed some property in the county, and I'm also a licensed professional engineer in the state of Kansas. And so, uh, I guess under both hats, I can appreciate uh, what public works is and planning department is trying to do. This is a welcome change as far as the access management policy specifically. Uh, is uh, related to uh, these are some of the regulations that uh, I advocated for uh, on a recent uh, planning process so I applaud the change um, a couple things specifically that I wanted to bring up um, were the fact that uh, in, the, in the resolution itself under item one it says that the access points are placed in location uh, most advantageous to state flow traffic for greatest sight distance um, I think adequate sight distance is more appropriate there. Um, if the applicant looking to place a driveway can prove that the access location meets all industry standards for safe and adequate sight distance, um, I think that should satisfy the requirement. Um, and I didn't see anything specifically for driveway spacing from existing roads. So if you have a development that uh, you're trying to cut a driveway in, is there an influence area? of an existing road that would have to be separated from for required to be you know, 
whatever the road classification is, 300 feet or 330 feet away from an existing dragway, are we also required to have that spacing from an existing road? Um, there's a lot of guidance, and I'm sure public works will be able to come up with a recommendation on that. But just have that addressed so that anybody who's looking to develop in the county isn't hit with a surprise that, well, you're required to have a driveway spacing at 330, but you're also that puts you too close to an existing road. Um, so you got to shift all your lots down and have a lot maybe too wide or whatever. So just uh, a little guidance on that. Just have the very beginning. I, I, and I didn't know if that was under the, the second part or not. But Mr. George just pointed out the, that I guess there's a public road access standard standard, but uh, the second sheet, I don't know if David just applied this. To the, it was after the resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all goes together. It all goes together. Okay, so if we're going to talk about that, the spacing of existing roads, um, and this is on just after the resolution of the uh, access management standard for existing roads. Um, well, that talks about spacing of existing roads, of proposed roads. Again, it doesn't speak to the relation of those roads to existing roads, if they're, they're staggered, you know, how does that affect uh, development? Obviously, it makes sense to put new roads in where, where, where existing roads are, but uh, sometimes that spacing can be a little bit challenging on depending on the project on the collector roads uh, access at uh, the 1320 air rule um, <coughs> one issue that might arise on that if you're trying to create two new local roads that tie into a collector road and that's the functional classification mm -hmm. where you have to bring your local roads to the collector road you'd want that to put your local roads in towards the highest and best use of the zoning so if you zone for two and a half acre tracks i believe the minimum road frontage is 200 feet so to maintain the lot width to depth ratio of three to one, I believe for tracks that size, it's 600 feet. So there's a, or there's a little bit of difference there on how you could develop that land to highest and best use. So what I looked at was if we had two and a bigger track to get 200 feet of road frontage, you need about 544 feet of depth. Um, so that's about 1,100 feet for each block. And so that, I'd like to see that reduced to 1,100 feet just to allow for a higher, better use of the land. We're going to rezone the two and a half acre tracks. I think that makes some sense. Um, but past that, it was really, um, it, was, it pertains to just the access management policy, just some more guidance on how and where driveways, proposed driveways and proposed roads interact with existing access points and existing roads. But overall, this is similar to the type of access that I was advocating for uh, before and after the mm -hmm. resolution to 2017-01. So appreciate the efforts today on getting this revised. Thank you. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. Good input. Does anybody, just to make sure, does anybody have issues with the changing greatest to adequate, or we can, we'll discuss that. And, did the board understand what that point yeah, was? Yeah, as, as long as the, the site distance meets the standard requirements, standard. then okay. it, I don't have a problem with that. And the other two items we'll look at and see if what the how to address best address those. That will also put pressure on David. I don't know if you like that pressure, uh, you know, adequate. That's all in the eyes of the beholder. What's adequate to you is not adequate to me. So there could be some. It may need to be something of industry standards or incongruence with whatever I like item, it. but we'll we'll talk with DVP on the most appropriate. I like standards. industry standards. That's sort of uh, same it, thing about roundabouts. Yeah, I think that's what the adequate was getting at. Instead of greatest, the adequate would be the industry right. standard. Good point. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Herring. Joe Herring, uh, again, same concerns with market, really, was additional, but I do appreciate the work that staff has done to revise the access management policy um, when it when it states I would like to see the 330 and the 660 reduced down to match planning and zoning width for five acre homes that's 300 then we have one distance to remember and I understand the reasoning for 330 if you take a half a mile 2640 and you break it into equal parts it comes out to 330 when you get down there but not all half miles make your half mile <laughs> that's going to cause some conflicts. It gives a little more leeway to get the extra driveway in there. If you have 10 acres, you want 660 by 660, and you want to split it, and you don't have a true 660, you can't get your two driveways. So reducing that 
down to match planning and zoning five acre width of 300 feet would uh, I like that looked at uh, road classification uh, is that still based off the 2004 map or is it going to be based off of current road counts and the new map will be developed the, the classification of the roads are are not changing so the 2004 so, map those road classifications were Correct. So the traffic count is what will be reviewed whenever the application is made, and they'll look at current traffic counts. But the the classification of the roads are either arterial or collector. So much much like the case that we just had up here, arterial classification, but it had less than 200 trips per day. So that has the lesser, which would that would mean their driveway spacing would be 330 on this policy. So, and again, right there on that that case alone. This is this isn't frontage. This is spacing. So if you have a 300 foot track, center line to center line of driveway, okay. it shouldn't be a problem to get 330 feet. Of. Unless the driveway happened to be right on the property right line, the property line. then you Most could this case. create it. But I get that. I thank you for that clarification. Uh, and of course, safety is the, the first concern. Uh, Given control to the city for the 1320, raises some. One, if, if we're going to do that and allow the city to control the next, they get 660. That's the standard. That's the set distance. If we're going to give the next 660 to control for access, I think those property owners should be notified that, hey, you, you own property, but now your access is going to be controlled by Lansing or Level of your base or Tonkasi, and give them the fair warning that this is coming your way and be prepared for it. Um, I still like the 660. That's what they control. Everybody used to it. If we want to expand that, Another discussion with the, the property owners actually involved in that. Uh, Mark touched on the the road spacing. Uh, there was an item uh, Commissioner Clint talked about was you can sell the property, but the new seller can only build if it meets the standard at the time of the application. I think that I should state that they can build if the standards were met at the time of the division of the property and the creation of the property. Uh, it goes back to the grandfather clause that we've talked about. Maybe <coughs> the intent, it just doesn't come off clear about that. Yeah. Is that, Jeff, is that the intent? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the intent. All right. So uh, we can change, we can clear, get that language clarified. And then the resolution that we have on existing tracks that are have homes are buildable, that, that resolution also would apply. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to clear, clarify that, that, that language. The last thing was we talked about the variance you have to go to the BZA. This board can't grant variances. You can grant exceptions to any policy. Uh, change the resolutions where there is an exception that's needed for safety or whatever reason. It keeps them from going to the BZA and allows them to come get an exception or a waiver to that rule by this commission. And stay out of the BZA, stay out of the $350 application, the additional 45-day waiting period to get something approved. Just change that word variance to or waiver and that can handle a lot of uh, downtime and, and problems. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else have a comment? Uh, does staff, uh, what is our time limit on this that we think we can? I think the items that were discussed today were just we just need an internal meeting. It would take us a week or no more than two. Since our next meeting is an evening meeting, we probably would schedule this for the 30th anyways. Okay. To come back with, with some changes and that were discussed today. We would review anything that was uh, like the 300-foot recommendation that was made um, and see how that would apply to this. I, don't, I personally don't see a lot of problem with that if we already have allowed lots that are 300 feet, but that might create other issues, so I want to make sure we have a chance to just evaluate it before we make say yes, no to that. I think testing the driveway spacing versus lot width type of a scenario is, is yeah. really what, what but, we're Yeah, at. I think we could definitely have this back to you on the 30th. With, uh, again, I, what I'd like today is any of the
conversation that we had today that is a must. So if there's anything that the board had that said, no, this absolutely has to change, I would like to know that so we can get that in here. Um, any of the other stuff that is uh, discretionary after review, um, I didn't, again, I don't, I didn't have anything um, on here, the 660 versus 1320. I'm actually the one that asked for the 1320 just because I thought an eighth of a mile is basically only for roads that touch. Anything else would be out, and that, and I thought, and the cities actually right now have a three mile radius that we send them a letter saying there's a potential subdivision coming in or a lot split or whatever. And they have the opportunity to respond to that three mile radius already. Um, we were just asking that it was more proactive that the city must sign off. I don't have a problem with 660 feet, and actually, like I said, I think that's what the staff proposed originally, and I added the 1320. So unless uh, I, I'm sure they're not going to fight over that one since their original recommendation was 660. That's just me. I'm okay with 660 if that makes this more palatable for everybody. Does staff any, have any problem with uh, approaching the cities about moving it out of three miles? <clears throat> well, we're working with the cities already to, um, for those that have the ability and the, and the desire to take on the three mile urban growth areas. We're already working with those cities to see if that's something we can move forward. Um, according by state statutes, there are certain limitations, but um, we're working on that already. So uh, <clears throat> anything else, um, this is just for either the interim or to address it if that doesn't happen. So. Okay. Does anybody else have any, any other? Just other than, you know, I'm sure if the city's comprehensive plan shows that they're going to do something major in that area, I'm sure. Well, they would still have the three-mile radius where they we notify them and they can come in, but they have to have, in their plan, they have to have mm -hmm. a, uh, a prepared response as to why the decision that we're making might impact their future growth. It's not, they can't just say no. They in, can't just send us a letter and say, no, we don't agree with it. Um, on okay. the 660, they can send the letter. They have to, they have to sign off on it at 660. Outside of that, it's simply, uh, they can't just send a letter saying, no, we don't agree, because that's typically what they do. They have to come out and say, this is why that doesn't work for our growth, so. Is there currently a moratorium on any plats on Eisenhower that's in the county? Okay, was there some discussion of that? I think what we discussed is before any building permits were issued along there because of the fact that we'd be acquiring right away that we review it to make sure that we're somebody's not building a building in what's future right away. Oh, okay. That was the discussion that we had, and I think the city, both cities agreed, and we agreed that before anything would happen along okay. construction path, we wouldn't allow building within there if it was potentially going to have to be tore down in a year, anyways. Well, it may be longer than that now. Well, however long that might be, but okay. it would be reviewed first. Okay. I have no. I've got about four little items here. <clears throat> Hopefully they won't become big items. Uh, I'm still concerned about the uh, Ladies Drug and Alcohol Abuse Council. Uh, I've got the proposed uh, expenditures for 2016 and the exp expenditures for uh, 2017 for which she was proposing. Uh, I'd like to know who appoints the committee. I think that the, the clerk was working on that. That's something outside of this, though. You're, uh, if you'd yeah. like, I'll put that on an agenda and have come in and give you a formal briefing on that. Okay, I appreciate that. I don't think she knew at the time. Uh, no, we looked into it. And she was looking into it. Yeah. I think she has more information now, but we can definitely. Um, uh, we need to get together with. Uh, City of Leavenworth, they have two different uh, factors here. Reduce, uh, on the one sheet that they put out in their finances, it says reduce by 15%. That goes to economic development in their proposal on Charter Ordinance 54. Nothing goes to economic development. 15% goes to reducing the debt. Nothing in there says anything about economic development. Uh, 
and we're going to get the Port Authority somewhere going, I guess. You uh, mean the city and their budget has nothing for economic development? Is that what you're saying? On the one cent sales tax. The well, sale then, of, then where did they get the money for the industrial park? They, had, issue, they come up with $5 million. They issued bonds. And that's on they, they issued bonds, bonds yeah. so they it had to bonds. come out of the one cent sales tax, surely. Well, we don't know that. We don't know that, I guess. What we do know and what we don't know. But if you look at the original letter from Lansing, it said nothing about McIntyre. And then they went into quoting 1998. And then all of a sudden, 2016, McIntyre comes into view. So, you know, uh, it's just thought processes that as time flows, and unless you keep that old, all that old prop, uh, data, you don't know what's coming up and who's bringing it up and why they're bringing it up. Uh, last thing is, uh, went to, uh, in fact, uh, Commissioner Smith was there at the Lemon County Development Corporation, and it was brought up that, uh, uh, of course, we know we haven't appointed two members to the Port Authority, and once we resolve do we need the Port Authority, then we'll look into who's going to appoint them. But, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, who was it? Retired. Bill New, he's retired. Is he the first state bank also? Yes. Not only has he given a lot of years, he's given a lot of money. Now, has he reaped money? That's where mines automatically go, oh, well, he's on this board to, no, don't let your mind go there because that's not the proper positive look. Not everybody gets a kickback in life. I noticed on the board of directors, city of Baser, city administrator, city of Lansing, city administrator, city of Lovemorth, and city of Tonganoxie. I don't notice, well, why can't you be a member of the board of directors? For the LCDC? Yeah. I think the county has a position. It's just not labeled as the county administrator. I think it's because in the past it's been one of the board members. Okay. What the chairman was. Mm -hmm. Chairman? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. I think, I that's think why it was last year. Yeah, that's the way it was. You mean I'm carrying that kind of weight? Yeah, yeah. you're, you're carrying that down. kind of weight. So there's still some ends that need to be picked up, and I know it didn't have anything to do with, uh, but I continue to research. And of course, you know what I'm running into, most people? My little thing here. I don't have little things. Anybody not out there not understand that? I don't look at one thing. I'm looking at hundreds of things a day. Nothing benefits me. Does anybody not understand that? To study the finances uh, and the expenditures on Eisenhower Road affects me probably more than anybody else not developing that road. But I think we ought to be on a cash basis operation. Now, I know there's some businessmen that say, go out and borrow, get all the money because you're going to get a good rate. You'll get a good deal of this, you'll get a good deal of that, but so much money. And we're up to looking at over $90 million now. The interest on that money probably will balance out. But if anybody ever has a problem that they're thinking I'm benefiting, well, I got you come forward and prove it. And that's to all the people that sit and watch through the cameras and do the little bitty Facebooks and all that other stuff. I don't get, I don't gain anything except I think I know right from wrong and can you afford to do it and that is what has created one of the problems in all governmental entities right or wrong can you afford to do it so I appreciate input but if you've got an input you bring it to the individual don't put it on disgrace book. Uh, we're now having the people that develop disgrace book saying 
we may have let this go too far. We may not have done, should have done this because of what it's doing to the kids. So uh, I appreciate inputs, but they need to be verbal to the individual. And I will uh, next time come up with where all the information, and it's all right here, of who said, well, we're going to do this now. And then later we come in with specific roads. And I would hope we'd get that uh, discussion on Eisenhower so people will know that we want to be on a cash basis. I'll, now the board may disagree. I'll make sure that's on the agenda. Yeah. They I might, sure I might put it on for the 30th since the uh, city is, the, both cities will let them work once and we'll have someone here for that right. meeting already. So my That's very good. Here. So um, we, had, we did have one other item here that um, was, we, first we discussed the access management and like I stated, we, one of the things we came across that we've been working on in conjunction with that are road impact fees uh, and policy on road impact fees. Right. I think that there's, I think the, the, the plan we have right now needs to be updated. I think it's been out there for a while and needs to be updated and some things addressed. And so um, we do have that here for as part of the work session as well. Today? Yes. Uh, it's in, it was I thought we always were going to look into the road impact fee as whether it was legal or not. I think that what we have is is um, what we're collecting already has been reviewed right. as legal. This is just a the application of it. Um, there are some uh, one of the things that we had that's also addressed in this is when we do a, a plat review and we're requiring roads to be improved versus. Um, money put aside for those roads this policy takes that into consideration it addresses some of those things it it splits up when the fees are applied so that you that somebody's not coming up with them all up front necessarily and it puts a more uh, we're trying to put a more reasonable number on some of the roads that um, like the local service roads the low volume lo roads versus a high volume road right now those it's the same same fee is applied to both. This addresses some of that. Um, and then people who are building on already improved services, um, this would alleviate a part of the fee entirely from those people. So that's mm -hmm. what this next resolution that we had here, the draft resolution to discuss. Um, and I'm sure that uh, there's some gentlemen in the room that are interested in that as well. So if possible, I'd like to go ahead and, and kind of go through that as well. Do any of the commissioners have any thoughts on that? Resolution, resolution 2018. You haven't come up with it yet. When we're discussing it, do you have anything? No, I'm on the first one. I'd say we'll just let them make the changes that yep. and come back to us. But the new one, the other one that discussed development fees, I think that's what we need to right. get into now. So, is there anybody want, in the audience who wants to talk about development fees? Yes, Mark. I don't know if you want to have a staff presentation of this is not first, but uh, we kind of give my uh, objections or whatever you want to call it, just some, some uh, observations of mine. Um, so we're moving away from requiring the developer to approve an unapproved road, as I understand it. Um, and we're going to use a, I guess, 50% basis of what the county engineer establishes as cost to improve a road, which I think that's a, a valued attempt to try to balance a lot of things. I don't think we're going to make everybody happy um, with this, with this. but um, one thing to keep in mind is that whether you're charging a road impact fee to the builder or the developer, this, um, what do we call it, a, a DIF, mm -hmm. um, that all goes to the homeowner and that's all used in establishing the price of the lot. So. Put something in this hand and put something in the other, and it's all going to the homeowner. So, um, something to consider um, when, when setting those costs. Um, one thing I wanted to clarify is does this apply to, if I, if I have a subdivision that fronts two roads, uh, one is improved or according to the county inventory and improved road, and one is not, my lots front the unimproved road, does the DIF affect? Road or apply to the improved road. And I can I can go ahead and answer that one. So 
If you look at item three of the examples, we utilized two roads that were existing. That calculation would be revised, removing whichever was already. So um, the, the diff is always based upon an unimproved road frontage. So if my lot's fronted on the improved road and not the unimproved road, what would apply? The, well, it would approve, it'd be whatever the frontage is. So whatever you're proposing as the frontage, the access points. So yes. if I had 80 acres that fronted a improved road, but on two sides or one side had unimproved roads, and I decided to put my lots on the asphalt road, I would take no DIF. As, as of right now, Yes, we'd have to pr uh, obviously look at it, but our, our purpose and our intent from planning and zoning and public works uh, side of things is that we want to encourage people to improve or um, develop on improved roads. So, so that's a, a little bit, so, by the takes a little bit of some of the applications I've been involved with, but with previous resolutions, but um, I think the intent is to direct developers to pay for the, the impact the way they're impacting unimproved roads mm -hmm. and not steer them to develop mm -hmm. roads. Maybe I'm misunderstanding that, but because um, typically an improved road that's existing improved is a road with a lot of vehicles on it and probably meets classifications, higher mm -hmm. classification of the street. So, uh, but maybe you're letting developers pick and choose what's the highest and best use of the land, how can they best get lots based on the access requirements, I'm not sure. Yeah. Just one clarification. So that answers one question that existing improved roads will not have a development improvement fee. Um, could a developer opt out of this? Um, it may not make a lot of sense, but say you have a development that has, um, you know, for whatever reason, depending on lot count or how the roads are laid out, maybe I don't want to uh, wait for the county to improve my road. Because of the marketability of my development, I want to be able to approve the road right now. Mm -hmm. yes. Happy handled is just correct. Oh, here's the plans. Let's build the road. Correct. Okay. Um, one other uh, item was uh, there are two cost items in here that are set by the Public Works Department. Uh, one is the cost of the road that's used for the DIF calculation, and the other is the, uh, the road impact fee that's reviewed by Public Works. Given the cost impact people I'm not sure I, I think I'd like to hear that discussed and brought forward in front of uh, this board uh, on this on the same interval just so people know what's out there and a little bit of documentation on how we're adjusting those rates uh, that that adjustment would have to be approved by the board okay we, we would it make have some more to it's already approved so, approved. so, so resolution would have to come back to the board. Yeah. 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 I actually got yes. something last week from you no know, Norm Bowers on what it cost on county road improvement, what the historical prices were. And I meant to get that tomorrow. And I've got it. I can run it off and put it in your boxes. Okay. So currently in this resolution, every two years um, we do traffic counts. And part of that we would go through and, and a look at the road priorities in each township as well as the roadway costs and impacts. And if there's any adjustments that would be made, Say, for instance, if there is a 15% cost increase in, in roads, then we'd bring that to the board saying that 15% would go to the RIF and the DIF um, equally, so that way it still all balances out. So the RIF and the DIF combined equal one whole. If you, so part of it is to the building, um, the builder who's, who's pulling the permit, and the other is to the developer who is pulling the flat. But, Two parts equal one whole. Okay. Whereas previously, if the developer chose to pay for the entire road, we needed one, the road got built immediately. It wasn't waiting for county priorities on the barriers. Mm -hmm. So that's one. You know, the developer could say, well, I don't want to pay for this road, but you know what's actually, it's actually going to be done in, on my time frame. Um, and then we'd have to pay the road impact fee. That's, all that comes back. That's, that's the still the same. That's all the same. Yeah. Okay. Still the, the TIF would always still be there. But uh, these are based upon the road surface and the improvements of the road. So, so are you calling a, a road develop a, a developed road a 
blacktop, as Mr. Clamp has mentioned, or a chip and seal road? Are they both? It could be either or, but they would have to meet the criteria for the drainage, the road width, and, and the improvements, the right of way. All of those would have to meet the criteria of an improved road. It, it, it's not something that um, a dust patch that's been there um, and maintained. Like I got could. a dust patch in front of my home. Right. So that, that may not meet uh, I've, I've kept the it criteria. up over, over these quite a few years. I don't know how long. Yeah, it's probably it, about it, six inches deep in asphalt yeah. now. But it may not meet the criteria for the width uh, and uh, the drainage, you know, the drainage <coughs> on each side and the uh, right of way. So all of that has to be reviewed. Um, we're not able to say an improved road is always X or it's not type of a scenario. Sight distance, curvatures, vertical curves. Grade. Grade. All, all of that goes into understanding if it's an improved road. All money. One okay. more point, if I may, and like I said, I know you can't satisfy every scenario with, with the policy, but uh, for instance, say if I develop on an unapproved road, I pay my gift we face the grid, we build out, a um, couple years go by, the county says, you know what, this is the priority for this year, they build the road, and then somebody comes and buys the other side of the road, they don't have to pay anything but the road impact fee. They don't pay the diff, I guess is what I'm getting at. I guess, theoretically, it's an improved road. That would that'd be the case, yes, that's correct. Are you saying you'd like that change? Well, I mean, it's happened before where it's happened a long time where, you know. Well, they do that on water. Well, if you. A lot of times with the water, you just have to build the district. Well, but the interesting thing is uh, past experience, okay? You pay for this quarter of a mile of, of uh, water pipe to eight inches, we'll expand it to. Uh, 16 inches and if anybody builds within that amount of time 10 years and you get some money back right and I don't want to create an accounting hassle for the county mm -hmm. but because uh, I mean they can get out of control pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you could also form a benefit district too <clears throat> I mean, on your plat, it could be in, put into a benefit district. If you approve it from the current policy, it goes to the current policy. If it's a part of the approval anyway, then that would be the way to do that. On the benefit district next to the road, and so under this scenario, I'm only paying for half of the wall. I guess, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to know what other counties that surround us do. And, Similar. You mean like Atchison? Well, um, Atchison's probably not a comparable. No, that's not a good comparison. Um, I guess Wyandot would be. Uh, and we do when corner. We I do join Wyandot Johnson. Went and did all their roads just like we were. But then mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Well, I mean, on their building permits, on their fees, they they collect. How are we compared to the counties that join us? That mm -hmm. join us. We, we can address a couple of them. I mean, we can't address every county that's mm -hmm. around us, but we, we have looked at a few counties mm -hmm. around us. Um, Johnson, Johnson County, um, from what I've read in their regs, they basically do not allow development on a, uh, on a gravel road. Mm -hmm. If you're going to plat, you're going to improve the road, you're going to build internal streets. They got way more strict requirements. You have to be so far from a school, so far from parks, so far from fire stations. Uh, mm -hmm. Far from a fire store. Maximum uh, distance. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we could do that. It'd uh, probably make a lot of the developers out of the county happy. And we also uh, have looked at uh, Douglas County. So reviewing some of Douglas counties, they focus on um, really pushing the development towards urban growth boundaries. They minimize um, their development within the unincorporated county by maximum tracks and there, there have to be very, very large tracks. So um, from reading and understanding, talking with a few people, basically their plats can be a maximum of about three parcels when they do that and they have to be very large, large splits, one driveway um, access and, and they have some criteria on that. But um, their big, their big uh, restrictions in the unincorporated areas to focus on building the urban growth boundary. 
but we can bring we can bring some of those back or, during well, our formal my presentation. My concern was the, like. the fees collected and how. Oh, so fee, fees in Douglas are based upon valuation. Um, that's one thing that they, you know, one of my friends asked mm -hmm. me about as well is how are they collected here? And we have flat rates because we don't. <laughs> We don't go through a formal building review process um, in order to set a value to that building and then charge a fee like okay. they do. We have, we have that information, and Mr. Joseph's going to go grab that for you. No. I just, I mean, my concern is we might be getting a little high on some of our that's, fees. I, well, well but I, think that's a good, I think that's a good point, and it's valid, and we've discussed it. <clears throat> and one of the things that we talked about is um, our fees versus fees around us versus city fees. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you have to take into consideration is we're trying to collect through our fees improvements to roads. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you go into a city and build, the road is either already there and they're put a benefit district in, like Mr. Brewer said, or the developer built the road and put the fee on the lot. When you buy the lot, you financed it with your 15 or 30 year mortgage, whatever it is. We're, we don't have that ability, or I guess we do, but then it would require that they actually come in and do a subdivision with the roads, internal roads, and, uh, which is what Johnson County does, and it requires uh, a significant more, uh, larger investment by any developer to go down there than it would here. So yeah, when you look at just the fee, you may think, well, that, that seems to be getting out there, but when you look at versus building inside the city, um, it's mm -hmm. it's not out of line. And I, I, uh, I do think we've discussed that as a committee, as a group of employees, uh, we discussed that because I was concerned about it when I first looked at it too. Then I started looking at you know, well, I'm still just, paying a special benefit on my home. I've mm -hmm. lived there for nine years and it was there for a lot longer than that before I even got there. So so, but, so where another county may not have the fee like we do, mm -hmm. they don't they don't allow the development on a gravel road like we do. So, mm -hmm. so we could either say, okay, developer, improve the road, but don't pay the fee, or we could collect the fee and not require them to approve the road. So just you can't just look at the I mean, I know our fee's high, but it's really not enough to do the road either. Well, that's what we're trying to correct. And, but at the same time, when somebody builds a house and all of a sudden we're at $8,000 when you come in and get a building permit. Well, that's, that's the reason we yeah. went this route. Instead of putting it all on the right. building permit, let's collect some from the developers, some from the building permits. So you have a house, way. you have a house plan, and all of a sudden you can lop off 800 square feet of the house to pay for the building permit. Well, the other yeah. thing too is that um, you have, yeah. So we have people come in who are on the gravel roads, who are tired of the dust, and they want us to come in and put a road in. Um, typically, the county doesn't go in and do that as a benefit district, whereas the city would. Mm -hmm. So that road to be improved, you're going to do a benefit district, and the city's going to put that on your property taxes. Where, like 147th Street. The county's putting that road in. Uh -huh. People are going to come in. I think what we were just discussing the road's there. You can go build on that road, and we're not charging you for the cost of in installing that road because of the road impact fees that you're going to pay for the people who are already there, for the people who are coming in. The it, it's just a um, the application of the fee, the timing of it, versus what you would have to do in a city or in Johnson County where you just got to pay for it. So yeah, you're you're application fee and building permit fee may be less down there, but that's because the cost of the lot is going to be about three times more. Okay. Just add a couple more things, if I may. Um, one other thing that I know this would be considered on an application of the, uh, just to make sure while we're reviving there's something to think about is I think if, I think we had a provision uh, that a practice study be required if a development is anticipated to generate Exorbitant amount of traffic. Um, so this, this, I mean, this rule wouldn't apply necessarily to residential developments, but say if somebody wanted to come in with, you know, with an after uh, chicken application or something of that nature, then we'll we'll go, don't they go they there. Can we back up and retract that? Yeah. Come on, don't no. cap, don't they go there. They could get by with potential. I mean, not that application, yeah. but they could get by with much less potentially. So I think there should be some discretion for the county engineer or whoever to say. This, if a, if a development is anticipated to generate, what I'm familiar with is 100 trips in the peak hour of the adjacent road. If that development is going to generate that traffic, which will be well above any rural residential development density uh, generation, that a traffic study be required by an independent third party and those recommendations be incorporated with priority issues of the building permit. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
just to protect the county from somebody coming in on an unapproved road and paying, you know, 50 grand for something that they're going to have an exorbitant impact on. Um, so that was the last thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all I had to share. Appreciate your time. Anybody else? There it goes. Thank you. Dan Lynch at 19751 219th Street, Tom and um, My question is, so if we improve the outside road on this, um, he was he was touching on it. Um, if you put in an interior road, it gives benefits both sides of it. So if you're on the um, outside of the subdivision and you're improving that road, is that developer eating the entire cost of it so that the next person comes along on the other side of the road, they just get a developed road? Is there any type of rebate back to the original developer that brought the road up to standard in the first place? No, there's not. Would, why wouldn't that language be added into this? If there was another 80-acre track on the other side of it, why wouldn't that person um, have to pay the same fees that I would have to pay if I brought the road up to standard? Mm -hmm. I'm think about and then I think the question also becomes, what is standard? Standard would be the current county standard. Okay. So I guess I would like to see a provision in there, something that would rebate back in some way, at least within a period of time, maybe something that was set up for a five year period where a developer that went in and developed the road. But obviously, it's going to bring benefit to the county by bringing a road up to standard on an outside of the subdivision. But if, if the developer chooses to improve the road, which would be allowed, the county would not be collecting any money to rebate back to the developer. You would when you uh, when the person across the street developed the road. So the money that that person would pay would be rebated back to the original developer that paid the whole amount. Well, based on the policy, that developer wouldn't pay the fee because the road is improved. I understand. I'm saying you're penalizing the first guy that comes along. Well, kind of like the shared driveway. I don't think it's a penalty because sure. you should, well, you don't have any no way I'm of knowing. Wrote the checks. Wait a it's minute. Well, so if you'll allow me to talk, okay. well, like I allowed you to talk, I'd appreciate that. Um, there's, it's not a penalty because you chose to do the road. You don't know when you did that road that there's going to be development in the next five years or ten years. So it's just you're taking a risk as a developer. You're taking a risk. If there is development, um, you would like for that person then to pay back a portion of what you've already invested. I think that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable request. Um, I do think there would have to be a timeline to that. But then um, we have to make sure that what that cost is doesn't deter future development. And, and I guess the example would be that um, you may, because of you're putting in a high-end subdivision and your curb gutter drainage the whole nine yards you're putting underground uh, waste uh, not wastewater but um, storm water and all that stuff whereas that's not that's maybe not required that that's not the plan that's required you've chose to do that the guy across the road comes in and wants to do the minimum standards instead of the high-end standards I would we would need to make sure that we're not assessing him for your standards but for what typical county standards would it be it would have been I think that would be reasonable. I don't have a, a problem with that. But I don't think, I think where we just have to be careful that it's not a guarantee. So we're, we're not promising you that within five years you're going to get that money like a benefit district would necessarily be. We don't want to assess it on the guy who's never going to develop his land. That, that's a benefit district, and that's the challenge mm -hmm. of the benefit district in the county where you have a guy who's a farmer and he's never going to do anything, but you come in and put a subdivision across the road and then you put the benefit district in and he has to pay for half of it. We, don't, we want to stay away from that. But if he came back in and said, hey, now that I have a nice new road in front of my house, I'm going to go ahead and, and put in a subdivision. Um, and Mr. Lynch is saying, hey, wait a minute. You know, I paid for that road and now you're taking advantage of it. I think that there's some reasonable uh, uh, limitations I, I that we could do. I think so. You know, and, and you said five years. I think that's probably a very reasonable time frame. And, but it would need to, again, not be... That that, we that only have the guaranteed. two fees, also, Mark. Well, so it would have to be a new it would, fee. It would. It would have to be. Would it? It would have to be instead of just different. the same option. 
Well, I guess it wouldn't have to be. We just apply the diff, and the diff would go back to the developer. Yeah, I think that. Mm -hmm. I think that's. I think that's reasonable. I think that's they reasonable. gave me ten years. I think it's reasonable. They gave me ten years, and nothing was developed for a living, so I wouldn't got anything back. But I, I took the risk. Sure. But I only had to keep it as an eight inch because it went through a lot of proving and you know bringing in facts and figures. So I wouldn't have got it sent back. So, let, let us uh, review that. Yeah. Make sure that those fees, what they that are the fees that we're assessing, which ones would apply. Kind of customary in water districts. And put that in here before we bring it back. And five years was reasonable. Five years reasonable. Well, you were on the same board. I'd say five because it's hard to track people down after ten. People move. People sell. I like ten. Yes, Mr. Herring. Joe Herring, thank you again. Sorry, I had to step out real quick, so I made it duplicate what Dan was just talking about. It was my understanding he was talking about improving the road. What if you, um, I pay the developer's fee for a quarter mile road on gravel, the, the, DI, the guy across the street, comes in two years, like, the road's never approved. You know, we're waiting for the county to get done, we'll never achieve that. He paid the developer's fee also. That wasn't addressed, but yeah, so what you're saying is you've already paid half, the next guy comes in and pays half. That does not guarantee that that road will be improved because that does not guarantee that it's a priority road. So that $28 per linear foot is half of the cost to improve a gravel road to, to either a high to either a high volume or a low volume county road standard, which is a chip and seal road. Previously this year we had discussions about PRP roads and everything, and we projected $100,000 It was hundred thousand dollars for each side. We were talking about fr half half lineal frontage on that as well. So it's a hundred thousand. I just I, I was just confused. I remember hundred thousand. I think that was the number that I think that's what Commissioner Smith was saying is they have some updated he has some updated numbers on what it takes to improve a county road. We need to review those. But and that those are the numbers the three hundred thousand and the five hundred thousand is what you're talking right. about. That's what we use to establish our fee. Is that those three hundred thousand five hundred thousand? You're that's saying per mile. They're saying right. that's for half of the road. You're saying that for the no. Road. So no. the five hundred and the three hundred are for the full for the section, full road. But then the it's per divided. lineal feet is for the half. That's right. That's calculated down the time. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do that calculation. Sorry. I should have been prepared. That's you to the yard. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Clint. Uh, anyway, okay. So if this does go forward, if the DIF goes through all the process and. <coughs> I would ask for a grace period to be applied to the enforcement of it, whether it be six months, seven months, a year, whatever. For that reason, if people buy property <coughs> right now, they have a lot of ground that's sold in our county. It may be gravel, it may be hard surface, it may not. <coughs> they have plans to split that ground and to get now told that, hey, you're going to have a developer improvement fee on top of that ground that you had planned on splitting. Mm -hmm. Should be a time to say you got six months to get you know get it in, or you're going to get hit with this fee. Well, we already have a fee in place. You have a fee and you have a process in place. Yes. Yes. But a simple so, transplant. So I bought 40 acres. Right. I want to transplant all five acres, but I don't want to do it until right. you know. Well, one of the things we're trying to address, and and I'm not saying that that's what you're getting at, but one of the things we're trying to address with our current policy. You, this board has seen it, I've seen it in the last year, where somebody will come in and avoid, in an attempt to avoid paying those fees or having to do the improvement. They'll do three lots, then they'll skip and do a lot, and then they'll come back in and fill in in order to avoid that. So by granting that window, what we're trying to do with this is we address that. If you're gonna do a lot, you're gonna pay the fee. It, by granting that window, basically you're just encouraging everybody in the next six months to come in and file anything to avoid, to basically take advantage of the system that we're trying to fix. So there's a loophole people are taking advantage of right now. We're trying to address that by granting a six month window. You're just encouraging those people to come in and take advantage of the loophole we're trying to close. Joe, in the 60s, I was advised to buy Walmart. But I'm going to go 
buy gold. And I'm going to keep it here as an investment. But I want a six month period. If I know it's going to fall now, I want a six month period where I can sell it. And I don't lose anything. So if a person is buying land for investment, you know, I bought my land for investment and I've invested and invested and invested. But if a person is buying land for investment, there is a risk. It's been that way from day one. So I understand they don't want to lose, but I don't see that we could set a four month or a six month time limit to allow them to do whatever they want to do. Uh, it's just not to me a good direction for the county to go. But that's the time. <coughs> The interior road is due to, so this was the example of if somebody wants to go on an interior, on our arterial road with the minimum frontage that we require for this particular two and a half lot um, zoning and then the driveway spacing. So this is kind of packaging all of it together. So given the driveway spacing, a proposed local road would need to be installed to get back to that 10 acre lot, um, but it would not have to be constructed all at once. So as, as these lots are sold or developed, that's when the proposed local road can be built. And so that's where that's at. But this shows that if people want to have the larger, um, the larger lots, and um, rather than doing some smaller lot splits in order to keep those larger lots in, in their um, entirety, how that affects the diff. So that was what that example was. That is on the developer to pay for that interior. So they got a 32,000 fee for the not, interior. Not necessarily. See, so that's why the phase local road installation per lot sale or building permit, that developer could say, you know, with this lot, the builder is required to build that. You know, I mean, you know, you can, that, that's, our, that's our reason. Like the developer, we want to give as many tools to the developer as possible. Um, so with that local road, you know, with each lot that's built, that developer knows, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm needing to complete this in order to provide a driveway access per my plat. They can, they can determine when that's so appropriate. Ask the question, what the counts are for? Correct. Right. Now apply that to your access management policy where a local road is not allowed to That works because there's not a road to the north or to the south. Correct. Okay. Yes, you'll see that there's no there's no roads on on, on yeah. Side and side. so correct. That's the ex that's, that's the correct that examples. Works. And then the mm -hmm. third example, those local roads are on a local they're less traveled, so they have to be at 660. Correct. And they're just showing that yeah. location. 
Yeah, so we try to pa we try to package up the examples um, to also bring in how that access management sure. works as well. All right, and projects that are currently in the loop, of course, at the time of application, I mean, that have been applied for or have started the process with, of course, these fees do not apply to them. If, if, they've, if an application has been made, the, pro, the rules that are in place at the time of application are the rules that apply. In place of application or whatever process has started, because some of them have actually started. Uh, I, have two I, can't, I can't say started because I don't know what you're referring to by started. If you they made the, compliance <coughs> over, if, They pay compliance fees to build a house and then they're coming back and track splitting it. Or, yes, they are track splitting it. Because they've, already, they've started the process with the county to compliance. They have they applied for the tax? Not yet. They will <laughs> uh, One other thing is this is more an explanation I need from public works. There's a part in here that states less than 400 trips per day, but if it has 300 per mm -hmm. count, what yeah. does that mean? So when we look at a minimum road to be constructed, we like there to be a minimum longevity. So we've decided 10 years is a good longevity for when a road's installed. We anticipate it that being appropriate for 10 years. Uh, so when you take our um, anticipated average growth rate, which we took at 3.25, and we looked at everywhere from two and a half in some areas of the county to four in other areas, and we decided 300 counts. Um, was an appropriate 10-year forecast for a 400 or less vehicle. So current count is greater that, than 300. You can project yourself to be at the 400. Correct. Okay. All right. Those are my, my other concern is I hope that this comes back with revisions and open for another work session. Or work session. Are you open for questions, Joe? I'm open for questions, yes. If we have that next study session, will you or the system want another study session after that? Just can't answer that. Depends can't on answer resume, that. Why the revisions are brought back? Because <coughs> this is all new to us. Then I would want to take a vote. This is uh, this was, this was not on the agenda, agenda really. The, agenda. the fees were. The access yeah. management was yeah. so. I understand that. Yeah, so I, I think it should be another work session. The ones that are here are the ones that pay attention to the agenda, which, as you know, get the packet. Very few that unfortunately read it. Uh, yes. More people should read it. Be more advised. And they can all get it on the internet. Right? All on the internet. Yeah. Right there, and I tell people that all the time. I mention. Being that this is so new, the access management policy has been going on a year on discussion. This is brand new to the, the people, the developers, and with that, there's more time left than getting the access management policy back here on the 30th, which is appreciated. Then there'll be, in six months, there'll be somebody, well, I didn't know that. See? But that's good. It's been over a year, so they, they should be aware of that. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. For appreciate your time. There, yes, Dan. I have one more question regarding this. If I were to put in the interior roads, is there a provision in here where the RIF could be, um, to county standard, where the RIF could be excluded from the building permit if I build the road to standard? And a provision like if I build all the houses out within two years or within three years, you said the life of the road is 10 years that we build to your standard. Would there be a provision where I could not pay the rent in regards to the road improvement fee while I was building those houses if I got those houses built within that two to three year period? So are you improving the existing county road? I am let's I am building an interior road to county standards and so I'm improving and the existing road if this was the was was it already improved? Uh, in the case that it is, would I? No. If it's already improved. If it's already improved, you pay the RIF, but not the DIF. But, if you build but it's also building an interior. 
we have an I build the interior road to it, can I have the rip basically where I, I don't have to pay it over the first two to three years? Um, the builder, saying, I think, would want to do that. I'm bringing you tax dollars because they're building their houses. In, in example, the example two, mm -hmm. building a new road, that's what he's referring to. The way the policy currently is written, yes, it does, but they would still pay the rent. Do you have to have the interior road in order to get a driveway back there? Otherwise, you have a landlocked area. So that's, I understand that. Yeah. And in, a new interior road is never factored into the, the rent payment. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's always been if you approved an existing county. Just to clarify, yeah. Riff, Riff has been waived in the past. Right. If, yeah, I thought that the they... existing county road was improved to chip seal or asphalt. <coughs> I thought they waived it. I thought they waived that on subdivisions that put in interior roads. We did. The one Hollingsworth and 168th, uh, Sierra Ridge. Sierra Ridge also. I thought also. Riff waived on those. I thought there's several examples. There's like there were several subdivisions I think that that was waived on. When, when they improved an existing county. Road. No, they just they just built an interior road. No, it was always when they improved the existing county road. Mm. So like that Sierra Ridge, they improved Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I think they can put that into the. I, I would thought like process. to stick through that. Whether we do it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Blue Stem. They improved. Wait. They improved Hatchel Road. Hatchel Road was gravel. They improved Hatchel Road. Okay. I thought Kane Estates too. It was it. I don't think they Riff and Tiff were away. Okay. I, I I knew there were some. Okay. But. Anybody else? Yes, David. Mr. Teal. Yes. I thought we'd hear from we're him. We're talking about Angus. No. Um, Dave Teal, uh, two seven one nine two two. Street. Um, I guess through all this discussion, I've heard the word developer and development has been used almost exclusively. I think um, this would affect a lot of landowners and, mm -hmm. and property owners that own property that maybe bought an 80 and wanted their two kids to build for you know to build and stuff like that. And um, and at one time, I've been in this business 30 years, and you know the county was. Parts of it were considered high growth and partly, you know, not high growth. And, you know, there's a lot of the county where, you know, gravel dead end roads that they have very little traffic. And if you're going to pay these fees, I guess I would ask you, what will you get out of that? Um, I mean, that roads will never be paved and they'll never, you'll never, or, you know, they'll never get anything for that money. So, uh, um, you know, and I understand. You know, you need to control growth and have these things for developments and that type of deal. But there's a lot of our county that isn't, it hasn't changed in years, and I don't expect it to change. I mean, where we border Atchison County, Atchison County has no zoning. So, so we're, you know, we're, and there's a lot of our county like that. So, um, while it's needed in some parts of the county, I think it needs to be looked at how it would impact these people and I think these people need to know what's going on so that before you make any decisions so they can put some you know give you some their impressions on what their thoughts are because I I mean uh, I'm not arguing that some of this maybe isn't good for you know for developments then that's all I've heard been talked about but there's a lot of the county that will never be developed in anybody's lifetime here that, that I can see so you're right. Um, you know, and I don't think we need to be, uh, you know, controlling that. I mean, if somebody wants to build a house, you know, it's got an 80 on a dead end road uh, that, you know, gets 10 cars a day, you know, they shouldn't be paying 27,000 for a building permit. So, so, I mean, I just would like that to be looked at a little closer and, and see how we could work around those options. I mean, what constitutes a development and or you know or certain areas of the county where you know even if there was 10 it wouldn't it isn't going to impact the road that much and it would never be paved so why are we why are they having to spend that kind of money on you know a road like right off of highway 92 next to the jefferson county line that that only goes to you know half a mile in so, i mean there's just situations like that that i think 
you know, you can't have rules, you know, for developers that affect the whole county. And, and I, I just think this county is big enough and diverse enough. It's not Johnson County. I mean, Johnson County, you know, when you got development going clear in the Miami, Miami County is a whole different animal than Leavenworth County. When, when we're a lot more like, a, a lot of it's more like Atchison and Jefferson County. So, so I guess I would just like those things to be looked at. And I think the general public needs to be known what's going on instead of reading in the paper that we got a, that this was passed but then not even knowing it's going on. Uh, I mean, and I guess that's your job is to get that out to the people because the, the people you're representing and, uh, you know, instead of them reading it in the paper. Because so, there are a lot of those people aren't, aren't don't have internets loose. So, well, so. but you know, Dave, uh, I mean, you used to live on a road that it never would have never been. Oh no, and I paid same tax as everybody else, I and I volunteered did. to take over my road, and they said no because it didn't have insurance. But no, but if you wanted to put a build a house there, and would you what? Would you wanted to pay twenty seven thousand or whatever it would cost to? No, I would have sold off the property and let the next person. But well, but, but still, but what if you wanted your kids? I mean, you know, there's a lot of situations like that. Guys. So I just think it's something that needs to be looked at and. And, you know, and that's not against what you're trying to do for the developers necessarily, but, uh, uh, but it, it, it certainly affects a lot of people in this county that have been paying taxes on ground for 100 years in some of the families, and then they find out, you know, yeah. this happens. But I don't think it's a majority. majority well, I don't say it's majority, a majority out of the 76,000 people, it is not an important factor to them. It is not an important factor, and they come up individually as an important factor because all of a sudden they want to do something and it's not a bad idea they want to do something for their kids or they want to sell off a piece because they need a little more for the retirement there's so many things but to divide up the county into little specifics for the dead end road for this for well, that for that get divided yep. up into, I mean <clears throat> high growth areas and are, you know around you know yep. that you can kind of draw lines on you know where the high growth is I mean you know, nothing west of Stranger Creek is considered too high growth. Uh, so, except for the, you know, the Tonganoxie area, you know, you know mm -hmm. there. But it's just food for thought. So yeah, I just think very good. Appreciate it. I think we can clarify just a couple of things, commissioners. Um, first of all, if you know you have somebody who has an 80-acre parcel and they want to build a house in the middle of that 80-acre parcels, the only fee they're going to pay is the existing fee that they pay already of the road improvement fee. They don't have to pay to pave that entire road. Um, additionally, um, example number one, the very first example on the front page, that's a very, that's a great example for, you know, somebody who has 40 acres or 80 acres and they'd like to do a track split, um, you know, to take out five acres for, you know, a, a kid or a grandkid or, you know, like Mr. Klimp was saying, you know, hey, I need to sell off a few acres um, to generate a little bit of income. Um, in, that ex in that example, we're talking about doing a track split and for that, you're only going to be paying the development fee for the one track that's coming out, not for all of the surroundings. So you're talking about $2,500, commissioners, not $28,000. That's a very, very big difference. So um, just to clarify that. Yeah. Well, it's, it was good talk. And also to clarify, yeah. our term of developer is anybody who comes in to request anything done with a piece of property. It can be you know, your grandfather coming in with option number one, it can be a, a traditional quote unquote developer who's buying up a piece of land and wants to put in a subdivision and build homes like um, some of our folks back here who've gotten up and sp spoken. But the term developer is utilized with anyone who wants to change anything on a piece of property. So hopefully that clarifies why we utilize the term developer. Okay. Well, and I understand it, but, it, it, but uh, I guess my thought was that, you know, grandpa isn't necessarily developer he's, he's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, no. we've been a developer for 80 one. years <laughs> <laughs> he's example one. thank you okay thank you Dave. anybody else Is there anything else on the agenda mark no sir just support okay. citizens anybody else got anything uh no we've kind of ran too long um well, i think that was a good meeting but you had a good uh, well we, we've held the crowd yeah so, uh, but I would like to see this discussed a little further. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I mean, 
we're lucky people do want to come to Lovemore County and, and live and we just don't want to price them out of it. You know, so. Tom, anything? Nope. And Good in meeting. Two, in two years after we approve this, mm -hmm. there'll be somebody who wants to change. Yeah. Well, and that's why I would like to see us hopefully develop a strategic plan for the whole county. Yep. And address this of, of areas of development and agriculture and uh, you know high density stuff like that and sewers hopefully uh, I've, I've spoken with David and Sarah about a plan to, to to see where would be the best place to run sewers in the county uh, hopefully we can do something and maybe we can tie it into the county road one study and then expand it to the whole county to do it uh, strategic plan for the whole county. Okay. It's not going to be cheap, but nope. But as long as you've got a plan here and you revisit it every year, make adjustments accordingly. I mean, it, like I said, they're I just not don't. Making I, any more land? Well, they're not making any more land, but uh, I don't want to, the fees. I don't want them to get too high to where they just go over into Wyandotte County. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, that's no. why the Piper area looks like it's growing pretty good. That's why Johnson County's coming to Leavenworth County. That's right. You heard that lady said, I moved from Johnson County to Leavenworth County. And they're mm -hmm. down 254th or 260th Street. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a paved, uh, it's a hard surface road subdivision. Yeah, but we gave them the water. We helped give them the water. Or they wouldn't have done that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All okay. right. We don't have to uh, move to adjourn since this was a work session. Right. So. We're adjourned. <laughs>